Hi, it's Matt here from Go Green Autos. So in this video, we're going to look at this van, the Maxus E-Deliver 3, and uh, have a look at what's under the bonnet. I've got it here lined up on the uh, single post lift, and we're going to lift it up, have a look at the battery pack, and what else is underneath. The E-Deliver 3 is the first ground-up electric van. So all previous electric vans, and also many of the new ones coming to the market, like the Vauxhall uh, Eva Varo and all the other Stellantis clones of that van are all diesel vans with an electric drivetrain. But this van is being designed to be electric only and therefore the construction of it is a little bit different and it's all about weight saving to be that little bit more efficient. As far as the size of this goes, it's basically the alternative or replacement to the Nissan ENV 200. Very similar size. These have got uh, a 4.8 cubic meter cargo capacity in the back, whereas the ENV 200 is 4.2 cubic meters. And these are available with a 35 kilowatt hour battery or a 52.5 kilowatt hour pack. First off, we'll have a look under the bonnet, but before I do that, I'll just mention that on this van, the wings are plastic. Uh, lots of other manufacturers have plastic wings. Uh, the Renault Kangoo has done for many years. Uh, the, the advantage of those is obviously they're lightweight and they don't dent so easily. The bumper is obviously plastic as it is on all modern cars. Uh, all cars have a complete plastic front end. The one thing that's slightly different on this is the bonnet is also plastic as well. Again, it's about weight saving, but the advantage of having a plastic bonnet is when you get stone chips along the front, as you always do, because all the wear on a um, wear and tear on a car is from the front end with stones throwing up at it. Uh, it's not going to rust, and uh, plastic panels also don't dent. So I have released the bonnet catch under the dash, and then you've got a traditional latch here but the bonnet itself doesn't lift up any more than that. It's not on hinges. Instead, you just grab it and lift it all off. And then that gives you great access to the engine compartment. Not that you as an owner would ever need to come in here apart from filling up the windscreen washer bottle. So let's show you what we've got under here. So first off, this is our motor stack. So we've got the motor at the bottom there driving the front wheels directly not that you can really see it there's the dry shaft down there and then the items on top will be your uh, charger and inverter units i'm not quite sure which is which on this vehicle i haven't really studied it um, but anyway most manufacturers have this sort of arrangement where they just stack all the units on top of each other um, and that's because they're water cooled so you've got hoses here uh, keeping all the electronic items cool and the motor itself will probably be water cooled as well yes i can see some hoses at the bottom there going into the motor so everything that is orange are the high voltage cables so you'll have connections here which it looks like is that one with wires coming from the back of the vehicle which will be coming from the battery pack and then you've got wires here coming from your charge, port, charge ports there at the front. Um, so yeah, these are all the, the high voltage bits with um, generally DC current, but uh, we can see here that this is our cables going down to the electric motor. We've got U, V and W written on there. Um, but I guess the electric motor is AC, I'm not sure, anyway, that sort of level of technicality is beyond my pay grade. But um, yes, yeah, a very neat system and uh, very easy if it ever needs to be worked on and um, plenty of room under here. So we have here the 12 volt battery. All EVs have 12 volt batteries still because that powers your lights, your wipers, your stereo, primarily your central locking when you're unlocking the vehicle because your traction battery is isolated when the vehicle is shut down so you need the 12 volt to operate the central locking open the um, doors get in turn the ignition and at that point the contactors flick over to deliver the high voltage traditionally about 400 volt dc 
from the traction battery to your motor stack here and then the vehicle starts up. So that's why you still have a 12 volt battery because it keeps it all simple, keeps all the components standard and primarily it keeps it safe. And then here you've got the braking system. Here you have got the um, water, the cooling fluid for your cooling system. And there is a radiator down there at the front with a fan on it and windscreen washer bottle as I said, uh, fuse board and here's your air conditioning lines and I can't quite see where the air conditioning compressor is uh, but I think that's under the floor because on these vehicles when that kicks in you can feel a vibration on the floor of the vehicle so I think that's set back a little bit probably under the dash. Um, we've got a uh, a loop here which will be um, an emergency release or a manual release for your um, charge ports. I'll just show you the charge ports here. So they're under the flap here. You just give it a push to release it. And then we've got two charge ports here. The top is your AC charging and that's a type two. Uh, it's a standard seven kilowatt on these, I think 6.6 .6 kilowatt. And then at the bottom is your DC charging. That's the rapid charging. And this is a a CCS connector and uh, these are 50 kilowatt DC and your standard 6.6 .6 or 7 kilowatt AC. And putting the bonnet back on is really simple. You just line up your catches both sides, push it down like that, very quick and easy. Now more at the front, very large headlights, standard halogen, um, standard bulbs and all of it, no LED but we've got split main beam and side lights, all very nice and easy to uh, maintain. And LED daytime running lights down here, some fake grills there. But I think the front is really smart. Um, it's also just worth noting this silver, metallic silver panel here was bright blue on the original pre-production vehicles. Uh, and I saw those at the NEC commercial vehicle show some years ago now, and it did make it look rather cheap. Um, obviously they took some feedback from that, and now they're all metallic silver. But if you have a look online and look at the details of this van, a lot of the information was still from that initial pre-production launch, and it shows blue plastic. Um, but none of them for the UK and Irish market are blue plastic. It's all. Uh, metallic silver and the same goes for inside the dash is now a sort of brushed grey plastic effect here whereas originally this was the same bright blue which did make it look a little bit cheap but now changing that colour has just transformed the look of it and it actually it's for a van it looks really nice. I thought I'd get a magnet here and just show you which panels are plastic and which are steel so as I said front end is plastic the doors are steel, the roof is all steel, however this panel here is plastic. The panel here between the two uh, doors, which is quite a complicated shape, is all plastic. Um, so it's nice lightweight and it's not going to uh, get damaged and dented like they normally do on vans, particularly when you get seat belts trapped in there. Um, door, sliding door here is steel. This is steel, this is steel. These two panels here are plastic. Again, the complicated molding around the lights and hinges. The back doors are steel. So as I said, this is all plastic, but again, it's where it's mounting to that aluminium frame. It's the whole back end is an aluminium um, box with the steel sides bonded to it. Um, doors all still. I've done a video about the lining on these because they all come lined as you can see which no other vans do. They've got rubber on the floor, plastic lining panels on the side including a full length um, fabric, uh, you know a, a felt type uh, roof lining as well. And then around this side obviously the same plastic panels here, still um, panel along the side, still front doors. But what you do get on these is this black sealant between 
the panels so you can see it down here along the uh, sliding rail and this panel um, which some people have looked at and don't like but of course it's just the way modern vehicles can be uh, constructed now um, and it's because they use a mix of materials and I guess it's because they're mounting to um, these aluminium rails inside but I think it feels really nice it's just very lightweight and easy so normally with van sliding doors you have to really slam them to make the back latch catch you've got to make that door slide in and slam shut so they usually take a bit of work sometimes you've got to do it twice um, but on this van it is incredibly lightweight and we're only half open and that just slams shut every time it's just really nice to use it does feel much lighter and because of that if you're not used to it maybe feel a little bit cheap but it's not it's just you know, it's just modern construction it's all much lighter and easier the, the doors here slam with a nice thud but they slam shut every single time even with a very light push um, I think it feels really nice back doors are quite large because it is quite a wide vehicle and very traditional latches so this one first and you do have to slam it reasonably hard to get both latches shut uh, and that door isn't as light as the others because it is a big door and you've got latches top and bottom it's got to slam against that rubber seal so that's no different to uh, other vans but the tolerance is all right the gaps are all right it's a nice solid uh, shut and um, yeah while initial looks at this you might see this sealant along it and think mm, that doesn't look very good but it's just modern construction it's all about being lightweight um, but you look at the rest of it and it is built really well so now let's lift it up and have a look underneath so when this van first came to that show there was a lot of talk about the modern construction of it and uh, using lightweight materials and a lot of composites however all the panels are steel it is only the front end which is plastic i was expecting it a lot more of it to be plastic panels or composite panels um, but the design obviously as it's an electric vehicle only the design is a little bit different and we've got deep plastic sills along the side there isn't the traditional pinch weld sills metal sills like you would find on all other vehicles this is a box section chassis with just plastic panels on the side but I must admit it does look really good very deep sides it looks very chunky and modern looking at the back of this van quickly they all do come with reversing cameras and parking sensors as standard so looking underneath we've got leaf spring suspension on the back and that allows it to carry the payload uh, Nissan ENV 200s have leaf springs as well on the rear uh, but the payload of this vehicle uh, is a little bit greater than the ENV 200 and this also has a greater towing capacity as well and uh, looking underneath obviously I guess that's where your tow bar would fit on the main chassis rails there I'm not sure whether there is actually a dealer fit tow bar available yet or whether it just have to be third party but then looking around here we can see the floor is aluminium and that's all part of the lightweight construction and actually there's quite a bit about this in the brochure so traditional vehicles are all welded steel panels whereas this is a little bit different it clearly uses a steel um, chassis box section steel welded together and then it has an aluminium framework and then your steel panels are bonded to that so it's all about weight saving and efficiency and that's why you have these different uh, construction techniques because it's designed from the ground up to be electric only and to be light and efficient and uh, for that reason that's why I like these vehicles you can also see well underneath here this under seal it's been sprayed on all the steel sections obviously not needed on the aluminium but uh, 
it's covered every single part so it does look like it's very well protected underneath. So let's just get in the middle here. Here we can see the battery pack and here's our isolator switch to disable the battery pack primarily in an accident or battery removal and you can see there the pack is very flat and is also mounted much higher it's actually quite a slim pack as well but you can see there it is above your chassis rails and that's different to all other electric vehicles where they're as i said built to be primarily diesel and the battery sits underneath and hangs down low because it's an afterthought whereas this vehicle the depth of the seals well they're not really seals but the depth of the sides um, more than cover the depth of the battery pack so this is nicely protected and out the way and still gives you decent ground clearance so yeah looking from this side we've got about an inch inch and a half of clearance between the uh, chassis bar there and the battery pack so the battery does not hang down at all like it would do with normal electric vehicles and if you go to the front we can see here the battery pack the battery is housed in an aluminium box and then we've got aluminium runners down the side where you can see there the bolts holding it up to the subframe of the vehicle and then here we've got electrical connections into the battery an earthing connection your main uh, 400 volt dc output plus and minus on there as well which is quite nice we've got the sticker up here which shows the pack is 237 kilos which is actually seems very light for a 35 kilowatt hour pack production date comes from china United Auto Battery Systems Limited is the manufacturer. Uh, 100 amp hour lithium ion battery. So yeah, um, there's no water connections to the battery. Um, got something here that looks like a fan, but it isn't. That's obviously some sort of cover. But yeah, the battery is surprisingly uh, shallow. Um, and obviously this is a smaller pack that does come as a 52 kilowatt hour pack uh, but if i have a look underneath here there's plenty of extra depth there for the longer pack going back to the construction again we've got the aluminium flooring up there but the front part is traditional sort of steel construction and it's covered in a black undercoat on that and you see we've got this sort of gray um, coating that is sprayed on afterwards and uh, and then here is the electric motor and then you've got the reduction gear that's a very simple little gearbox which just reduces the speed down and then one drive shaft here for the driver side wheel and another drive shaft here going out to the passenger side wheel and then looking at the electric motor here we can see here it's 40 kilowatt rated power peak power 90 kilowatt 350 volt dc 255 newton meters and uh, it's made by that manufacturer which i'm not going to try to pronounce and then, then and then at the front here i think this is probably the air conditioning compressor i looks like air conditioning hoses going up there so yeah it's not under the dash as i thought from the front it's at the front of the vehicle here um, and then obviously we've got high voltage connection at the top there and then the motor mounts uh, here on the subframe another big mount up there and another corresponding one on this side but that's hid hidden from view by this plastic cylinder which i don't know what that is maybe some sort of vacuum thing for the brakes possibly i don't know it's just got a rubber hose connection on one side but yeah overall it's very simple but of course it is simple because it was made just to be electric so just to mount that electric motor and then obviously suspension components and the battery pack so the whole design of the body 
is an awful lot simpler than a combustion engine vehicle would be. Uh, while it's in the air here, I'll just show you the tyres. They're 185, 65, 15 inch, um, XL, mud and snow. These are Wanley harmonic, um, 15 inch steel wheels. Uh, quite a nice um, hubcap there as well. Standard coil and shock absorber suspension. Um, having a look around there. It's all very standard. Um, I think that's about all I can really show you underneath. Um, if there's anything else you want to know, then do write in the comments. And uh, you know, if there's enough to make a future video, of course I will do. I'll just show you the brakes on the uh, back. Uh, we've got these rubber bump stops here. Um, shock absorbers on the rear suspension here with our leaf spring here instead of um, coil springs and then we've got uh, a physical handbrake handbrake lever at the front so this is your handbrake setup here um, yeah it's all pretty bog standard here on the back as well uh, I don't think there's anything else I need to show you here on the back same size um, Tyres and wheels, obviously, uh, with disc brakes as well on the back. So I think that's about it. Um, as always, if you've liked the video, please do click that thumbs up on YouTube because that really does help other people find the channel. And uh, do subscribe if you haven't already. And there are other videos on these vans on the channel if you want to find out more about them.